Ah, Mars, the red planet, and our potential new home. Uh, Well, Mars isn't as hospitable as it sounds. It's really inhospitable. It might be a balmy 20 degrees Celsius during the day, but at night, the temperatures can drop to minus 153 degrees Celsius. Okay, if you don't know what minus 153 degrees Celsius is, it's intensely cold. It's like minus 243 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the type of temperature that will give you frostbite in seconds. In minutes, you'll die from hypothermia. Seriously, guys, learn the metric system. Also, we do the conversion for you in the closed captions. And if you think Uranus smells bad, well, that's because you haven't been to Mars yet. Yeah, the red planet smells like rust and gunpowder. But when I wear my helmet, all I smell is me, and I smell pretty good. Most of the time. Well, you wouldn't be able to breathe on Mars anyway. The planet barely has any atmosphere. Most of it is carbon dioxide with only trace amounts of oxygen. Luckily, this time we aren't sending you to Mars. We've decided to sacrifice Chase for this mission. What did you mean by sacrifice? I mean send. We sent Chase up to set up a base on Mars and report back. Hey, he made it. Welcome to the Red Planet. <sighs> kind of nothing here, huh? <laughs> I thought there'd be more stuff, you know, Rico? Any ideas? I detect no breathable air, high levels of radiation exposure, low pressure and frequent dust storms. If you want to survive on Mars, you must build a habitat. Great idea. How long will that take? With the materials you transported aboard the starship, I calculate it will take about three months to assemble a simple base. Eh, that's not so bad. I better get moving. Now, building a habitat on Mars wouldn't be so simple. It's got to be airtight and insulated to protect Chase from radiation and Martian dust storms. It also needs to have a sustainable life support system to manage air, water, and waste. And, of course, Chase will need to get power from solar panels. You don't want to know where I get my drinkable water from. But I'll tell you anyways. I could extract water from the Martian soil or atmosphere, but it's so much work. Instead, I recycle water from things like sweat and pee. (laughs) I just try not to think about it. The sensors are picking up a micrometeorite headed straight for the base. Potential hazard detected. Don't sweat it, Rico. We got enough water. Base is fine. I've built it myself. Here, let me give you a tour of my crib. Welcome to the fanciest pad on the planet. Over here is where I sleep. And over here is where I eat. And over there, is a window. And this is my luxury first aid corner. In case I get hit by like a dust storm. Those babies travel at like 100 kmh. They could easily slice through my space suit. Oh, you gotta see my Michelin star greenhouse. It's five stars because it's rated out of this world. It's my favorite place in the space. Only thing is, I had to build it unattached to my main living quarters because Rico forgot to include a tunnel in the first base plan. So now every time I gotta go check on my plants, I have to go outside. It's exhausting. That's why I don't bother to take off my helmet when I pop into my habitat. I'm all about efficiency. Plus it's a lot to animate, actually. Check out these potatoes. They look pretty good. Take that, Matt Damon. Micrometeorite is approaching the base. I calculate the chance of it striking the habitat as 87.42%. Rico, silencio, por favor. I'm recording a YouTube video, my friend. Come on, and what did I tell you? Round the numbers. Okay, where was I? Oh, yeah, potatoes. It takes a lot of work to grow anything on Mars. Taters aren't my first choice. I'd grow burgers if I could, but we work with what we got. I keep my greenhouse nice and pressurized and at a comfy temperature of 16 degrees Celsius. 
And for those of you who hated the recycled pea stuff, you're gonna love this next part because as a fertilizer for the Martian soil, I use a super special ingredient, my poo. Not because I'm a sicko, but because Martian soil is literally garbage, figuratively speaking. It smells pretty bad in here. Ugh, at least it doesn't smell as bad as Uranus. Danger, micrometeoroid has breached the habitat. You must go there immediately. What? Ah, oh, damn meteoroid. Sorry guys, I, I gotta go check this out. Your helmet has sustained minor damage. Ugh, this is my favorite helmet. Rico, do I have a spare somewhere? You have an extra helmet. But I have bad news. Uh-huh. What? What now? The extra helmet is back at the habitat. Of course. Of course it is. Are you kidding me? Three months on Mars! And I just finally start getting this thing working, and Mars has to ruin everything! <sighs> well, uh, at least I have tape around here somewhere. Be back in a minute! Uh, here, this should work. Rico, how's that storm looking? Not good. A dust storm of this type, it can last for days. Oh, great. That leaves me no choice. If I don't make it back in time, I'll lose everything and die. And I can't die now. I just finished building this sweet, sweet bachelor pad. It's only a five second walk for you to reach your living quarters. Okay, come on. It's only five seconds. You can do this, Chase. You can do this. Get your head in the game, boy. <laughs> Oh, this helmet is useless! I'll go without it! Five seconds to get back home. I can handle a little bit of frostbite. I highly advise you, don't do this. Okay, well, if I don't make it, I'll see you guys on my next adventure. Chase, out! Looks like the atmospheric pressure killed him before the frostbite could. Didn't I say going out there without a helmet was a bad idea? Yeah, don't try this on your own. And don't worry, Chase will be fine. It's kind of his thing. He dies, a lot, but he always returns for another adventure. Where should he go next? How about the stinkiest planet in the solar system? Well, that's a story for another What If.